All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So it depends upon the time when you are watching this um, video discussion. Um, um, before I would like, before I will start, I would like to, I don't know, to encourage everyone, uh, since this situation of ours right now is becoming alarming and disturbing as our COVID cases is increasing again. Somehow it can be related to ethics. Simply that with just one mistake, you know, if you are a carrier, if it happens that you are a carrier of the COVID virus, then um, if you will not follow the protocols, uh, you know, I guess it depends. I mean, it doesn't depend on what kind of status you have. You may be authorized or not. You should be very careful that just one mistake, you could uh, infect everyone living in the community. So that's what happened right now. Because it, because if you want to go out, then you, you do not know. Without your knowledge, you have already the virus. Um, the tendency is that you will go out and meet your friends or people who have business with you then those people will go home and then will interact with others as well so magkalaton laton na so that is the implications or the consequence of you know not being careful you know somehow you know it's kind of uh, a, a situation effects where the person who is subject to the to the uh, to the problem I mean, siya may pinakauna well, you know he might be I mean, he might be guilty of, you know, not thinking the outcomes of his um, doings so basically, uh, we will be discussing about you know, what would be the would be the basis of ethics it, it should be the outcomes, the consequence or the result, the implications or the the manner on how it's being achieved, I mean the action, kung paano niya nahimo. So, let me start with a, you know, a scenario, um, a dialogue between Calvin and Hobbes. Um, Calvin is trying to, I don't know, trying to, to decide, yeah, I try to decide whether to cheat on my test or not. So, what provokes you or what compels, compels you to, to decide to cheat or not? Um, of course, you have not prepared on the exam, in the test. So, the other option you have, in order for you to pass, is to cheat. So, I wondered, is it better to do the right thing and fail? Or is it better to do the wrong thing and succeed? What he meant by that is that, if you're gonna do the right thing, you will not cheat, but you will fail. Or, you're gonna do the wrong thing, you will cheat and pass. So on the one hand, undeserved success gives no satisfaction because you did not deserve it after all because it was not your hard work. It was only by means of cheating. But on the other hand, well deserved failure gives no no satisfaction either. So basically, you did you you deserve it because you did not study, you did not prepare. Of course, most everybody cheats some time or other. People always bend the rules if they think they can get away with it. Then again, that doesn't justify my cheating. So most of us I I go on in a, in a situation. We always we do this because we can masakpan or we can go away with that. And nevertheless, nasakpan ng wala. You still did the wrong thing. Then I I thought, look, cheating on one little test isn't such a big deal. It doesn't hurt anyone. But then I wondered if I was just rationali rationalizing my unwillingness to accept the consequence of not studying, though it does not hurt anyone. Of course, it doesn't hurt anyone, but but the the very uh, doing by itself is a wrong doing, and you are just only trying to justify because your your action of of the unwillingness to study or to like that. Still, in the real world, people care about success and principles. So though somehow we have this uh, very um, um existential. Um, judgments, you know, uh, very so um, superficiality. I mean, having superficiality, we only look in the appearance on how successful the person is, but we do not know the behind how the person achieve that success. Then again, maybe that's why the world is such a mess. So, what, what, why, why, why did he say that? Of course, 
Um, if naan atang mo cheat from elementary years, secondary, and college years, of course, if we did it in the wrong thing, I mean the small thing, we can do it in the bigger thing. Become if we we are going to enter the world of politics, so that would be the result. We all, if not all, almost of us, will be corrupt. Look, even the time, um, we gonna miss it because. Intentionally, we did it because of our um, laziness or whatsoever. So, what did you decide? Nothing. I ran out of time and I had to turn into a blank paper. So, he ran out of time because he was deciding. So, what is your memo but to submit the, I don't know, the paper and the answer. Anymore, simply acknowledge, acknowledging the issue is a moral victory. So, for, for Hobbes, it was a moral victory because he did not did the wrong thing. So, it was in the middle of decision making, but has not decided at all. So, well, it's just seen wrong to cheat in an ethics test. So, very ironic, no? Nga manuid to sa subject. Na nagatudlo na to na to cheat. Alright. Let me proceed. What happened? Um, the ontological ethics. Although I have already provided the, I don't know, the basics of the ontological ethics. Let us go um, uh, uh, just a bit deeper on uh, about the ontology. Um, uh, the ontological ethics says that being good consists in following the right rules, meeting all your obligations. So unlike consequentialism, uh, the ontological ethics is highly unsituational because you can rarely um, experience this. So sometimes you cannot decide. Uh, on this uh, standard like for example killing is wrong it is always wrong even if killing someone will save one million lives like my uh, like the, uh, the situation I provided before about a police officer killing a terrorist who is about to bomb um, the mall although if he will kill the terrorist he could save it hundreds or thousands of people but the very action of killing of the terrorist is wrong that's for the ontological. So, the our obligations according to W. D. Ross is fidelity, faith, uh, faithfulness, reparation, to repair our wrongdoings, gratitude, to be grateful, render justice, to prevent harm, to improve ourselves, and not to act um, wrongdoings or unlawful acts, non maleficence. Alright, let's uh, know, I mean, let's try to know Kant. Immanuel Kant, one of the very brilliant philosophers, no? who is the proponent of the ontological ethics and the categorical imperative. Um, Kantian ethics rests on two major claims. The sole source of moral goodness is the will. A good, a good will is one which acts from universal, universalizable reasons. So, like Augustine, um, the source of goodness is will, because your will is the one having the power or the capacity to distinguish what is good and bad, what is right and evil, diba? So, for example, you have the capacity to, and the one that reinforces your, your will is your reason, because you are trying to deliberate on the decisions um, you are being confronted by. So, between this, this choice and that choice, this choice is bad, this choice is good. So, you have the will to decide on it, and your reason will will uh, you know reinforce your deliberation so um, if you're gonna do the, the, the good things because you the the good the, the, that's why I can't uh, stated that it's the sole source of moral goodness because it's from us if you're gonna decide to choose the good decisions at all times then we are trying to flow out from us the the goodness while it couldn't be also it can be also the source of uh, immorality like if we're gonna choose the bad things it will flow out from us also so a good will that's why there's a this is this is specific a modification that a good will is one which acts from universalizable reasons um the will is a source of goodness um for Kant, he emphasized um or rose out abilities or talents because this can be used for evil like for example we are good singers dancers sometimes if we you know 
we are misaligned to our goals in life sometimes we will be blinded you know we'll go the other way around malingaw na ta sa mga disturbances and uh, distractions we might be going to drugs or or whatever vices we want to 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 you know to enjoy he also rules the consequences for him can't uh, because uh, like on consequentialism and utilitarian um the all the all based on the outcomes right for Kant it is coming from I mean he ruled out consequences as not up to us it's not for us to de determine what is the consequence of our action as long as we do the right thing the right decision or choose the right decision the good decision then the outcome of that decision of that action will be decided on the the outcomes or the consequences no longer up to us because it is a future kumbaga future not as we are confronted by 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 uh, choices in front of us so that's present and you have to do the right you have to choose the right and good decision or action and then whatever the consequences of that it's no longer up to us because that is that um, connotes future and that the future is not up to us so the only thing we always have control is over over is our will because it is we can control our will we can rolled ruled out our will because it is our capacity to choose what which one we can choose what policies to enact within our own minds so the fact that the will is a source of goodness is further confirmed by the fact that the reason is the thing which is most distinctively human so we have this reason nga moy nakapayunik na mga tao other than animals and other beings reason is very bad at making us happy for Kant it would uh, hinder our happiness so our end purpose cannot be happiness so for him like the um, the previous uh, pre-socratic philosophers and the ancient uh, philosophers are trying to to uh, define or to look for what is the end purpose of life so the end purpose of life for them is happiness but for Kant it is not happiness because reason can hinder um, achieving or attaining happiness so the only thing reason is good the the only thing though maka kaingon tang reason is good it is for allowing us to consider and follow good principles and maxims it is always in this uh, dichotomic terms class dichotomic terms with the two opposing terms the good and the bad the light and the the dark the bad and the good and all of those opposing things Okay. somehow I mean, it cannot be absolutely opposing somehow complementary because opposing is the totally opposite of it like like um, color um, white what is the opposite of white it's not black the opposite of white the opposite of white is not white it is the direct um, opposite of white is not white not black so black is opposite of white because it's not white yellow is the opposite of white because it's not white so that's why the the, the, the specific and correct term the opposite of white is not white so that's why i'm saying that it's only contrary like bad and good it's contrary somehow contradictory and opposed uh, and opposing terms but specifically it can also be contrary right before we're going to proceed to to categorical imperative let me um, allow me to let you watch the uh, short I mean a short um, video about the right and wrong or the trolley problem so let's try to examine and you know hopefully YouTube will not you know um, black the you know there's no intention of of uh, you know violating the, the ownership of this video so let's watch it a runaway train is heading towards five workers on a railway line there's no way of warning but you're standing near a mover that operates some points switch the points and the train goes down a spur 
on that bit of track too. But it's one fatality instead of five. Should you do that? Many people think the right thing to do would be to switch the points, to sacrifice one to save five, since that produces the best outcome possible. Now imagine the train heading for the workers again. This time it can only be stopped by pushing a very large man off a bridge. His great bulk would stop the train, but he'd die. Should you do that? Most people say no. But why not? Both thought experiments are cases of sacrificing one to save five. What the trolley problem examines is whether moral decisions are simply about outcomes or about the manner in which you achieve them. Some utilitarians argue that the two cases are not importantly different from each other. Both have similar consequences, and consequences are all that really matter. In each case, one person dies, and five are saved. The best option in each harrowing situation. But lots of people say they would switch the points, but they wouldn't push the man off the bridge. Are they simply inconsistent, or are they on to something? <laughs> Alright, so that's somehow problematic whether you're gonna base on the outcomes or the manner you achieve the um, the action. Where does morality really lies? So for Immanuel Kant is that he will not do anything at all because there's no difference. Because if you're gonna move the liver, it will not kill. And if you can, if you will not move the liver, it will not kill also. Regardless of the number, the killing of the of those people are both wrong and evil so he will not do anything at all at least he was not he was not the reason of the murder i mean of the killing of one instead of five at least the five it's already the default um movement of the train right so he has not made any action at all so um anyway um that's that's the problem between the the ontology and utilitarianism which is the founder is jeremy bentham and the second proponent of that is John Stuart Mill. So let's proceed with the categorical imperative so that we're gonna we're gonna dig in a more a more um uh, quite a bit bit uh, deeper on this. So there are two kinds of imperatives, hypothetical and categorical, but for Kant uh, morality lies only in categorical um imperative because hypothetical is conditional. Like if you want hammer you need a nail. So that's that's not concerned with morality. Categorical imperative is unconditional and it, it is the one that rules out morality. All right. Um, um, for the categorical Im imperative, this is uh, divided into three, and the first one is act only on maxims that you can simultaneously will to become universal law. So that means you can only act on something that you're gonna agree that the others, if others would uh, would do it as well. It would it would not bring good, and the universe. If, if all will do it, then it cannot bring good to everyone. So that's how uh, that's how you cannot decide on, on an action. So only act on maxims that you can simultaneously will to become a universal law, like helping. You want to help, and you do it because you know that helping is good. Like helping a a flat tire. You know, just in a sudden, you know, now I'm gonna encounter in the road, you know, flat, you're gonna help that um, that person even though you do not know that person, because you know that helping is good, and you want others to do it the same. So since you you come up to that particular decision, then all of us will also feel the way that helping is good, and to be helped is also good. So that makes brings good to others as well. So do not make an exception of yourself. You're gonna do it. If you can do it. If if uh, if everyone will do it, you should do it as well. I mean, that if that brings good to them, that also brings good to you. So, suppose that any time you acted, it instantly became the case that everyone else acted in the same way. Like for example, um, um, instant decisions somehow um, uh, mostly are bad decisions. If you have not deliberated on it, like for example, out of anger, you're gonna punch the person in the face. That's out of anger. That's out of. Uh, um, extreme anger or strong emotion so that's out of instant decision and everybody else as we observe also will do it because driven by emotion so for some for the same reasons you know we're driven by emotions you could not coherently still act in that way so in the next time around since you will experience that one 
you know that's not good so you will not do it again so you will no longer decide to act in that way when you, then you should not act on that reason um let's go further um you, sh you should act on a principle for example one should hurt those who hurt you. In the golden mean of Confucius, do not do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. But if I can, it's reverse. But somehow, it's just, you know, um, expressing the same meaning. So, um, if you want others, if you want, uh, if you want others, do it, do it also. Kumbaga, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. That would make them happy. So if you think that the principle is true, then it would be irrational for me to think that others should not act on it, diba? If you think ng ayun na and that is true, then it's really irrational for to think that the others will not do it as well. So, so you have to do it in order for for others to do it as well, you have to make it um, um universal. It is irrational to think that it should act a certain way. Well, thinking that society should be held to different standards. It's also irrational that you are the only one doing it while the others are not doing it. So it's very irrational as well. So the laws to which one is subject are only those of his own giving. Though at the same time they are universal and that he is only bound to act in conformity with his own will. A will, however, which is designed by nature to give universal laws. A will is designed by nature to give universal laws for Kant. And that is because... Um, the will, it's the uniform, uniform um, faculty that we all have, human beings. Um, I have will, you have will, all has will. And that will has the power to distinguish what is good and bad. So, if we all have that same capacity, we all have same power to decide what is good and bad, then it is designed by nature to give universal laws. Because all, all, we, all of us can, can relate, all of us can can judge, can evaluate that this doing is good, this doing is good, this doing is good, this doing is bad, this doing is bad. So we have that particular will. So we have to act on it based by deliberation, by decision making, that we should only act the, the good or follow or do the good maxims or our actions. Alright. Um we can act on principle which cannot consistently conceive of as a universal law. So he gives two examples. Suppose one has no desire to live. She wants to act on a principle that she kill herself because it would be helpful to herself. But the very idea of helping oneself implies not harming oneself. So I remember the, the, the conditions or the obligations of WD Rush, harm prevention. So if you are in the in the situation that you're already miserable and you want to to do suicide, you're gonna kill yourself because you think that it would be the last option that you have to do and very be very helpful to you. But the idea it is an opposing or against the idea of harm prevention that you will not harm yourself. So that is an incoherent idea and inconsistent. So that is that should not be um, treated or that should not be uh, be valued. I mean, be construed as a universal law because that is incoherent. So, like also for the borrowing money, um, you, you know how you don't, you cannot pay it back. So you, you, if you want others to, 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 to follow the same, follow the same um, doing, then you should do the right thing by paying back. Um, like for example, if you want the next generation, for example, you cannot make a precedence. You can do precedence, like uh, making uh, false promises. So you are making a precedence that this next generation will also have those kind of actions and the next generation and the, the generations go, uh, in the future will do it because you have started it. So that's why we can act on principle which cannot consistently will to be a universal law. So that's why we only act on those things that will be treated equally by others as well that could bring good or happiness to others. So, uh, let me summarize this one because I need to end this with uh, the, the categorical imperative and, and I will proceed with the uh, part 2 later on. So, the categorical imperative of Kant is divided into three. First is universal moral law, treat people as ends and kingdom of ends. That's why uh, means mong gamiton, pamaagi, the manner. While ends, you are the receiver of the action. A universal moral law, and this is wrong, no? L-O-W, that's L-A-W, supposedly. 
um, an ethical law can be universal if everybody wishes to follow it equally. If an action is morally right or wrong, it is similar for everyone. That's what, that's what I have um, discussed um, earlier, that we all have the same will that could distinguish what is more, what is bad or wrong. Well, treat people as ends, treat others and own self as ends. So there's the, the others and yourself as an indifference. If you, if you feel it the same way, you should think. You should also um, realize they could feel that the same way as well. Individual's capability of leading life should be recognized. Like, for example, the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Um, it was the, the only way um, the United Nations has perceived, or the United States, to stop the war against Japan. But the compromising um, action there is killing of hundreds of thousands of people who will be affected by the nuclear or the atomic bomb. Imagine. So their, their end is peace between or the surrender of Japan. That is the end they're trying to foresee. But the manner they achieve it, they need to bomb Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So imagine those people, the thousands of people killed, hundreds of people killed, they became the means, in order to achieve the, the result or the end, that is the surrender or peace. Well, Kingdom of Beds, imaginary state whose loss, loss na siya, L A W S, imaginary state whose loss protect individual autonomy. I will be discussing autonomy later on, but uh, not in this um, video. I will be producing part two. Morality is not just a matter of individual conduct but also the foundation of society. So you have to think of it. Please watch this, download this, as, as well as the output I uh, uploaded to um, Google Classroom. Study, watch it for our further um, assessments. So thank you, and uh, please keep safe. And God bless.